you're so much sure now Then I think it's time you grow up Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much to all the wonderful people who have stood by and supported me during these personal attacks this past week. I really don't know what I would have done without you and I cannot thank you enough for that. I've certainly learned my lesson not to get involved with anyone who has aspirations on social media and with that being said, I wanted to address a couple of things. I did not flee Los Angeles. I am not banned from California. I did not move away. I still live in LA. I still have my apartment there. All my stuff is still there. I simply came home for a short period of time to spend the holidays with my family and to be surrounded by people who love and support me. I was never planning on discussing this situation on social media, not only because I was advised not to, but also because I did not want to get into this back and forth social media war. Anyone who knows me knows that's not what I am about. However, I felt like I needed to make some sort of statement. My entire life has been completely turned upside down in these past few days, and it sucks. But I know some way, somehow, eventually, I'm going to come out of this stronger than I was before. And you guys have no idea how badly I just want to discuss everything with you and give you my side of the story. But that just isn't how these things work. So at this time, I can't. And that's why I haven't been posting recently and why I will not be posting for a while. And with that being said, thank you to everyone who is supporting me. And I hope all of you have safe and happy holidays. Thanks. Hey guys, uh, I just want to start this off by saying thank you so much to everyone for being patient and giving me the time that I needed to handle this situation. And I'm sorry that it's taken me so long to discuss it. But at this point, it still is an ongoing legal matter, so I needed to handle it correctly. Uh, but I do want you all to know that the allegations made against me in November are completely false. And my legal team and I have spent the past three months collecting evidence, receipts, and statements to prove that not only are these disgusting allegations false, but they were made strictly with the intent to gain attention online and to get back at me for not wanting to be with them. These false allegations are not being taken lightly and there are going to be serious repercussions for the people that made them uh, but with that being said after these videos we are choosing to handle the situation offline because we feel like something this serious really does not have a place on the internet and the only reason i'm making these videos now is because i felt like i needed to defend myself and tell you guys the truth about the situation um, I'm going to tell you guys what actually happened and share with you enough evidence so that you know that these accusations are false. But as I stated earlier, it still is an ongoing legal matter. So there's some major evidence that we are choosing not to share at this point that we are going to be saving for court. All right, let's go ahead and start with Noor here. Noor's statement that she put out has so many holes and consistencies and just straight up lies throughout the entire thing. Plain and simple, I did not even see Noor on the night of July 5th, which is the night that she claimed the assault happened. That night, she threw a party that I did not go to. I was actually at the gym at the time. And before that, she was at a shoot for a music video. She was actually cut out of most of the music video because she went to the set and lied about her age and was underage drinking. But I was able to find the shot that shows that she was in fact there. She does say that it could have happened on another day and she isn't really sure, which is really weird that she doesn't really recall the date that she was supposedly assaulted considering some of the follow-up statements she has made but just like the initial date that she claimed i can go back and disprove any other day that she said it could have happened not to mention that Nora's statement comments and tweets are contradicting each other all the time and just for an example of that she claims that it happened in july yeah right here in this comment contradicts herself and says that it happened in june now, before I continue on and finish telling you guys what actually happened, I want to make it clear that Nor did have a panic attack around me once, like she said in her statement. However, the details she gave are completely false. The panic attack was very mild and it happened weeks before the supposed date and everything was completely fine with us afterwards. After her panic attack, 
I was comforting Nor. She tried to kiss me and I did not shut it down. However, her kissing me was the only thing that happened. And allowing that was 100% a mistake on my part and I should have never let that happen. But for her to twist it and say that I sexually assaulted her in any way is a complete lie. After that, Nor continuously tried to hook up with me and would get extremely upset and angry when I told her that I did not want to do anything sexual with her. She would tell me I was a pussy and that I needed to man the fuck up. And eventually it got to the point that she was trying to sleep with me while I was blackout drunk. She even went so far as to try to drag one of my friends out of my bed when I was blacked out drunk and telling them that they needed to leave because she wanted some dick, even though I was completely passed out and in no position to make any decisions or consent to anything and had made it abundantly clear prior to this that I did not want to do anything with her. Uh, but other than that, Nor was completely fine with me. But other than that, Nor was completely fine with me in the following weeks up until I told her that I just strictly wanted to be friends with her and then a couple of days later she started making accusations against me. Nor has literally admitted to being a compulsive liar in the past and blatantly lied not only in her statement but afterwards in her follow-up videos as well. I can't fit them all in here because there's a lot but I'll just give you a few examples. She went online and claimed that I had fled California and that I was banned from Los Angeles. Why did he pack up all his shit and flee? He's no longer allowed in LA. Um, I'm not banned from LA and I was simply at home for the holidays to spend time with my family. I ended up going back to my apartment in LA about a week after she posted that. Um, she also went around telling my friends that if I stepped foot on the premises of the apartment complex that I lived in, that I was going to be arrested. I was not. Nor put these lies out there to make the situation seem worse than it was and to try to prove her case even though they were complete lies. She also said that the second video she uploaded was going to be the last time she talked about it. However, she uploaded a third video the next day. And on that third video, she said she was only going to leave it up for 24 hours and then take it down. But she kept it up for months because it was getting views and gaining her followers. Not to mention she was laughing at the situation literally a couple of hours after she posted the initial video because of how bad the comments on my videos were. This entire thing was planned out for months. She waited till I was gaining a lot of followers and getting a ton of views and until it was a trend to make this type of video because she knew it would perform better if she did. After that she followed it up with a bunch of couples content with her boyfriend because she knew it would get views. I've talked to multiple people who were close with Nor when she was releasing the videos and they've all said the exact same thing that she was bragging about how many followers she was gaining and it was obvious that she only put the videos online to get views. And just to add to the proof of that, as soon as those videos stopped getting views and gaining her followers, Nor took them down. She claimed she put up the videos because she wanted to expose me but as soon as they weren't getting views anymore and she had got what she wanted and gained her following, she took them down because she wanted people to forget that that's how she got her followers. Nor even went as far as to brag about how many followers she was gaining from the situation on her private story and would post stuff like this when people would make videos about it and they would blow up and bring more attention to the situation almost treating it like some sort of game. And there's a reason that most of the LA influencers choose to stay away from her. And I can't even express to you guys how many stories I've heard about her doing shitty things to people. And there's still so much more that I wanna say about this. But as I said earlier, I really don't feel like it should be brought online. After Nor's video, a second girl named Liz came forward and claimed that I had assaulted her in June of 2020 and then provided proof in the form of pictures of bruises that she said I had given to her. She said that these pictures were dated July 2nd and were from a few days before that, so they were from the end of June. Those allegations are completely false. I did not even meet Liz until July 8th, about a week after she claimed, which means that proof is completely fake. We only hung out one time and after that, Liz told me she was 17. Yes, she was on Tinder and had claimed that she was 18. I found out after the fact that she was 17 and was obviously upset and I told her that I wanted nothing to do with her. She was extremely sad and told me it's no big deal and that we can make it work and we'll figure it out. I stopped talking to her shortly after but she still continued to message me after I told her to stop. She also lied in her video about our conversations and what was said so I went on Snapchat to see if the messages were still there because she had saved them back in 2020 but she had gone on recently and unsaved them. However my attorneys have told me those are recoverable and we're currently in the process of getting those back. I could easily make a 30 minute YouTube video laying out everything that happened and showing all the lies and inconsistencies with these allegations because not only are there a lot, but there are some other disgusting ones that I did not even include in these videos. However, me and my team are choosing to move forward with legal action and handle this offline unless my name continues to be slandered and it gets to the point that we feel it's absolutely necessary for me to make that video. Um, so this will be the last time I discuss it unless it gets to that point because as I've said multiple times throughout these videos I don't feel like the internet is the place for this. My life was completely ruined because people wanted to gain some followers and get back at me I lost friends. My mental health was the worst that it's ever been I even had to move across the country because I couldn't afford my apartment in LA due to legal fees and losing my brand deals 
And I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be posting on social media much after this yet, but I decided I needed to come on here and defend myself. I have more than enough proof to show that they're both lying and I'm not gonna sit by and let my name be slandered any longer. The sad thing is they both did this for attention and to get back at me. And the fact that they would go as far as to lie about something like this is absolutely awful. And I really hope that they can realize how wrong that was. This kind of thing happens a lot and it's disgusting when it does because it takes away from the actual victims of assault who wanna share their stories. I can't even express how hard it was to just sit here and listen to these lies be spread about me over the past months and not be able to defend myself. But I had to handle the situation correctly and take the necessary time. Um, but yeah, that's really it. So thank you again to everyone who stuck by and supported me through this. And I hope that you're all doing well. Hey everyone, I am very aware of the situation at hand in the videos that were posted a couple days ago. Starting off, there are nothing in those videos that prove that I was lying about my initial statement. The only thing that was shared was a picture about the date, which I had already said that I wasn't 100% sure about. There are now some very hurtful allegations being made about me for some reason that don't have proof to back them up. This is also something I would like to move on from and stop dragging on the internet. And I'm here today to answer some questions. So Nick said that the panic attack that I had was very mild and happened weeks before the supposed date, which was July 6. Nick tries to comfort me, I lean in to kiss him and he doesn't shut it down. He then says after that that I continuously try to hook up with him and he would constantly shut it down because he just wanted to be friends. And then it got to the point where I was trying to sleep with him when he was blackout drunk. If we're talking about a couple weeks before July 6, here are some pictures from June 13th. Where Nick is saying that I dragged one of his friends out of his bed to try and sleep with him when he was blackout drunk um, is untrue. Nicholas also claims that I sexually assaulted him without giving a date, and I believe that date to be June 16th. Hear me out. I was only friends with Nick for about a month, and these are some texts and a video from the only time I've ever seen him blackout drunk. That works. <laughs> One of the texts that he sent me was um, one asking if I could come lay with him, but I didn't go because I was at my friend's place, so I wasn't even in his apartment at the time. Now that I've shown you that the only day I've seen him black out was on June 16th, these are some text messages from July 10th that don't really sound like they're from somebody with negative feelings towards another. I'm gonna insert the screenshots of when I first confronted Nick about um, sexually assaulting me and taking advantage of me and him gaslighting me and telling me that he would never do that and he never intended to do that and he's sorry that he made me feel that way. There have also been multiple other females that have reached out to me saying that Nicholas has done either similar or worse things to them. Moving on from that onto the smaller questions, uh, no, I did not do this for clout. I had 5.7 mil before I even created the initial video or posted it. I think everybody deserves the followers and the growth and the platform that they've earned and that they've worked for. I should be allowed to be happy as a teenager because I'm doing big things. As for the videos being taken down, um, once Nicholas had stopped posting on the platform and he moved out of the apartment complex, I just decided to take them down because he was gone and out of my life already. And honestly, I should be allowed to move on when something traumatic like this happens in my life. I'm just here today to clear up the hurtful allegations made against me. I still stand by every word that I said Nicholas did, in fact, take advantage of me on that night. I'm going to be posting regularly on my account, just as Nicholas already has, but this is something I should be able to move on from without it affecting my everyday life. Please stop harassing me. Hi, so real quick question for you since I know you're having a great day. Do you uh, want me to just leave this Gatorade water bottle here or do you like, do you like want that? Cause I don't know when, 
you're going to be at my place again, or when we're doing anything at my place. Um, so I just wanted to check. Okay. Uh, hope you're, hope you're doing well.